part 5 cleaning controllers and consoles and in this video or in this part I'm gonna clean two of my video game controllers this is the first one this is a tubo duo controller and yeah it has some dirt on it as you can see especially in all those grooves around um, the controller you can see there's a lot of dust and dirt also in between all those buttons like the turbo buttons there's also a lot of dirt also on the d-pad but for the most part it is actually not in a bad condition or anything actually on the sides there is no dirt or almost no dirt at all so this is one of the two controllers that I'm gonna clean in this video and also I'm gonna clean two of my video game consoles that I've got recently or actually a couple of months ago and this is the second controller that I'm gonna clean this is my PlayStation 2 controller and yeah, I've cleaned it before, but only uh, some surface cleaning, so I never opened this controller, so there's actually a lot of dirt inside of the controller and also all around those grooves and buttons. Uh, yeah, over time you collect a lot of dirt. Uh, it, it's kind of disgusting, but in the end this is something that happens over time, and yeah. This was also one of the controllers that I wanted to, to show you in this video and that I wanted to clean. Also here on the bottom of the controller there's also a lot of dirt in all those grooves that are on those controllers And here you can see also inside on those rubber pads of the D-pad and of the, the buttons there um, there's a lot of dust collected on those and those are the turbo buttons and I don't gonna wash those because they actually have a metal on the bottom and in the end metal and uh, yeah water or moist uh, yeah is not a good combination so they could rust over time so in the end I decided to clean those only with some sealed bang with the grease remover and the rest of the controller except of course for the circuit board are gonna wash in the sink with some dishwashing soap and with the toothbrush and now I take apart the PlayStation 2 the DualShock controller and it's actually been a long time for me since I've uh, yeah disassembled one of those or opened up one of those so <clears throat> it took me some time to disassemble it correctly and also later on to assemble it back the way it should be or the way you should resemble a controller and here you can see uh, the d-pad also collected a lot of dirt over time And yeah, now I'm gonna wash all the plastic parts from the Turbo Duo controller and also of the PlayStation 2, the DualShock controller, in the sink with dishwashing soap and with my trusty toothbrush. Also all the rubber parts and each button, all the D-pads and everything. Give it a nice, good cleaning.
Okay, and next I'm gonna clean all the contacts of the circuit board of the controllers with uh, Q-tips and with the isopropanol, with the alcohol. And even though the camera didn't focus that well, yeah, there's still a lot of dirt on the Q-tip. And now I also uh, clean the, the contacts on the rubber pads also with the isopropanol, even though we've cleaned them before with the dishwashing soap, but in the end they don't uh, they shouldn't be shiny or anything, they actually should be dull and that's the reason why you should also clean them with uh, yeah, with some isopropanol or with some alcohol. And now I'm reassembling the controller. And the final thing that I'm gonna clean is the cable and yeah I use right here the Silit Bang with a paper towel but you can also use uh, let's say a wet Dex uh, or um, yeah a wet kitchen sponge or whatever just to clean also the cable and now that the controller is reassembled and cleaned yeah you can see the final results and it looks pretty good And now I'm gonna clean the inside of the PlayStation 2, the DualShock controller. And even though you can't see it, there was actually a lot of dust and also a couple of small hairs inside the controller. And now I'm gonna clean most of the stuff with some compressed air. And I'm also gonna use um, uh, a soft brush. And I went over all those parts again to loosen up some dust that uh, hasn't been removed with the uh, compressed air alone and now I'm gonna clean it again with the compressed air and now I'm gonna clean the contacts again with some isopropanol and with a q-tip and yeah same thing again there is a lot of dirt on the q-tip <clears throat> from all those contacts and I also cleaned the, the analog sticks the, the bottom part of the analog sticks with the q-tip and with some silly bang and thankfully the, ca the camera didn't focus very well because it was pretty dirty <laughs> underneath uh, or on the bottom part of those analog sticks and now I'm gonna clean also the contacts on those rubber pads same thing like before with the Tuba 2 controller And now I'm gonna reassemble the controller and even though I had some slight problems with reassembling the controller it is actually not that hard and if you have trouble with uh, reassembling something or if, if you don't really know how to disassemble stuff you can find for almost every console and every controller a video on YouTube or on other yeah, video sites uh, where people um, disassemble and reassemble controllers and consoles so that you can look those up and make sure that you do it the right way or if you have some troubles that you can figure out where you went wrong or anything. And now finally again I clean also the, the cable and also I cleaned with the paper towel with some silicone bank the top parts of the analog sticks. And now that I'm finished the controller is clean again, it looks 
very nice. It's not in a near perfectly state or anything because uh, even though I cleaned it, there is still some light wear. You can see that the plastic is slightly dull in uh, some places because, uh, yeah, because of all the usage that the controller got over the years. But in the end, now it's a pretty nice controller. It's clean and ready for some more action. And now we come to the video game consoles and here I have one project that uh, yeah I bought a couple months ago actually. This is an Atari 2600, a heavy sixer. The condition is actually not that bad but it's not pretty or anything and uh, it looks like the console has been sitting around for some time maybe in a garage or um, in an attic or anything but it doesn't look like it's uh, yeah it wasn't in a box or anything so there is a lot of dirt and uh, some stuff that looks more or less like uh, mold and also the top panel um, yeah it got loose or maybe it hasn't been reassembled correctly. And here we have the power supply. Yeah, the power supply is also pretty dirty. And especially the, the, the cable of the power supply, uh, yeah, was actually pretty disgusting. I mean, it also looked like there's uh, a lot of mold on, on this cable. The controller actually was for the most part clean, only in those grooves you can see a lot of dirt, but the rest of the controller actually didn't look that bad at all, which was kind of surprising, but yeah. The console and also the power supply needed some work and a very good cleaning, especially the console. And yeah, here we have the RF cable. This was right after I got the system I bought it, I guess from uh, from the United States on eBay. And the first thing what I what I do when I get a new system, a new slash old system, is I take a look at the condition of the the system, and then I try out if the system works. And it turned out it works, but I could only get a signal on my very old PAL. TV, so that's the reason why it's only in black and white because it can't handle the NTSC video signal. But in the end, I can see that, uh, yeah, it works. And yeah, I couldn't get uh, a signal, any kind of signal, on my other CRT TV. But, anyways, now I'm gonna disassemble the system, and here you can see. Sadly, it misses uh, one of the stickers on the bottom because it misses the sticker where you can see the serial number of the console and with the serial number I would be able to, uh, to find out when this system was actually made, how old it is, is, is it one of the f first productions or one of the later ones of the Heavy Sixer. But anyways, on the inside uh, of the system there is actually a paper slash a receipt where you can see a date on it which uh, you can see just in a second and it says July 6th 1978 and yeah there are some rumors what those sheets are why those sheets are actually in those systems. Some people say that it is uh, kind of a factory inspection tag. Other people say that uh, they leave um, if the system got repaired by Atari or whatever, then they leave one of those um, yeah, sheets or receipts inside the system. So 
it's hard to say if the, the system was made around the time or maybe even before or whatever but in the end I have at least one information about the system so I can at least say that it was made in 1978 and as you can see the casing the, the bottom part of the casing is very dirty inside and now I try to remove the RF cable because there's a yeah a rubber ring on the end which protects the, the console from getting some uh, dirt inside and also to keep the, the cable uh, inside the system and yeah that you don't damage anything by pulling the cable or whatever and I didn't really record uh, disassembling the controller but I really want to show you the inside of the controller all the contacts which really surprised me because it was very clean inside and also nothing has happened to this uh, controller slash to the con um, to the contacts over time there's actually a, a clear protective uh, layer on top of those contacts uh, like a giant scotch tape or whatever and there's no rust uh, and nothing has touched those uh, yeah those contacts over time this was uh, I was very surprised to find this, uh, this control in this condition so this is just one thing that I also want to show you and yeah right now I'm gonna clean the, the casing and everything of the, the console and also the top part of the controller of the Atari 2600 I also cleaned with uh, yeah dishwashing soap and with the toothbrush and I also use uh, especially on bigger surfaces I also use the, the kitchen sponge but I only use the soft side of the kitchen sponge and not the rough side because with the rough side you can uh, yeah damage the surfaces slash uh, make some scratches or whatever so that's the reason why you should only use the soft side of the kitchen sponge Now here I just do some surface cleaning with the vacuum cleaner and with a soft brush to loosen up some uh, yeah, dirt or dust. And to be honest, this was the very first video material that I ever recorded for this um, cleaning video series. And uh, yeah, sorry but you have to excuse because I left out a couple of um, scenes or better let's say I forgot to uh, record those scenes. So for the most part you're only gonna see me uh, especially with with cleaning this system you're only gonna see me doing some surface cleaning like right here where I clean all the um, the buttons the surfaces of the buttons later on I actually did a more thoroughly cleaning I also cleaned the contacts of those uh, buttons on the system and I also cleaned a couple of stuff inside the system slash on the motherboard so yeah sorry but I'm gonna mention it later on which scenes I didn't uh, include or which I forgot to, to record but this is also one thing that I wanted to mention just that you don't think I, this is all that I did to this console because later on little spoiler right here uh, I'm having some problem with the with the system and yeah to in order to fix uh, this problem I did some modifications slash repairs but I didn't show anything yeah and here I'm removing again some dirt with the compressed air and now I'm gonna open up the system even more to the to the motherboard because I wanted to look also in, uh, on the insides of the system and yeah just wanted to clean almost everything that I could inside the, the system and also check if I see some damaged parts or whatever. And after I've removed this, uh, yeah, pretty heavy shielding slash casing, metal casing, 
I also cleaned uh, the motherboard first with the brush and with the vacuum cleaner and yeah then I tried to also disassemble the, the cartridge slot but I noticed that the cartridge slot was actually soldered on to the, um, to the motherboard and yeah so I could not disassemble it anymore so I applied the screws back to the cartridge slot because yeah I'm not gonna take uh, I'm not going to desolder the, the cartridge slot or whatever and yeah now I'm cleaning just the shielding slash the casing also again with some sealed bang and yeah now I'm gonna reassemble everything because this was yeah I just thought okay just give it a, a nice cleaning and let's go from there and let's reassemble it and try it out and see uh, yeah if everything's all right on uh, if we have some problems or I have some problems with the system and also if you uh, wash any kinds of cases or anything and you want to reassemble those please let them dry. Don't uh, be hasty or anything. Uh, maybe let them sit for one or two days. But if you really wanna um, work more quickly or anything, then um, clean them, dry them with uh, with a towel, and uh, also clean all those screw holes with compressed air because again, you don't want any moist uh, moisture or any um, yeah any water or anything inside your systems because uh, water and metal they will work over time and in the end you will end up with some rusty parts maybe with some damaged contacts or whatever so always uh, let the casings dry all the plastics dry or dry them with uh, with some towels paper towels or yeah pieces of cloth or whatever and only when they are completely dry then reassemble those systems or put them back together. And actually pretty funny because uh, after I was f uh, finished with reassembling the system I actually had to take it apart immediately because there were some problems afterwards which I'm gonna show you in a second but now I'm gonna clean the cartridge slot and I'm gonna use two flathead screwdrivers to um, which are inserted on the left and on the right side of the cartridge slot to open up the dust cover and I also used a thin piece of metal and a piece of cloth which I added some uh, isopropanol to the cloth and with the cloth and the thin metal uh, yeah I was able to clean the cartridge slot or let's say the contacts of the cartridge slot pretty easily and yeah this is a pretty good way to clean a cartridge slot on an Atari 2600 so this time I was able to get a signal on my C uh, on my other CRT TV, which can also handle NTSC signals. But the the picture, yeah, has a lot of distortion, and actually I had no sound at all. And yeah, I have also tried to adjust the the potentiometers on the system because you have three potentiometers you have one for the sound one for the color and one for the video quality but nothing really changed in the end all the settings were already the best settings on those potentiometers so i resetted all the, the the adjustments that i did before so that i would have later on a better signal so what i did which I have not recorded or anything, that's the reason why I don't see it, but in the end I have opened up the system again. This was the time where I cleaned also the, the contacts off all those buttons, but in the end I've looked uh, over the motherboard and I've searched for uh, cold solder joints or broken solder joints and actually I found a couple of those and I resoldered um, 
all those broken um, yeah solder joints or cold solder joints I repaired those and I was able to get the sound working again and yeah the picture quality maybe was improved for about two to five percent or whatever but uh, this was the point where I decided that I'm gonna modify the system and uh, I went online and bought one of those AV mods uh, to get composite video out of those systems and normally I try to keep all my systems 100% original I'm not a huge fan to uh, mod or better let's say modifying uh, video game systems in some cases it's uh, it's a good idea also in my opinion but in some cases I really don't like it that much so in the end like I said before I went online I bought one of the AV mods I also didn't uh, record any of the footage when I um, yeah made this mod it's actually a pretty easy mod and you can also find a very good video online if you want to see how you can assemble this mod or how to modify your Atari 2600 with one of those AV mods this is mostly the reason why I didn't record anything and now that I have modified the system with the AV mod and everything is clean again yeah I give it a go again with the game Demon Attack and as you can see everything is working very well I have no distortions or anything picture quality is pretty good also the sound is very good And here I also try out another game. This was uh, actually the one game that came with this uh, Atari 2600 Donkey Kong. And yeah, also this one works perfectly fine. So now it's clean. And it also works perfectly well and yeah now the final thing that I'm gonna do to this console is I'm gonna apply some WD-40 with a piece of cloth to get a very nice finish and yeah as you can see it's uh, just using the cloth to get in those grooves it's actually not that great of an idea or well, let's say I had some troubles getting in those grooves so I also used a thin piece of plastic to get in those grooves it worked better but not perfectly or anything so later on I just used uh, Q-tip and the WD-40 and with the Q-tip I was able to get in all those grooves and yeah make the system look really really nice and now here we can see the final results and only on the top left side of the panel you can see some white stuff and actually this is not dirt or anything this is just the the glue of the the sticker that is on those uh, on this panel where you can see all the writings the uh, on and off and black and white and whatever so it's not dirt or anything this is just uh, yeah some glue of this sticker and also I thought I show you on the top right the old footage or the footage on how it looked before so you can see a slightly difference or ability uh, comparison how it looked before and afterwards and I was also able to find a very good plastic piece that fits uh, right into the opening where the RF cable was so that I could seal it up which is actually uh, yeah, a spare part uh, of an old shelf that I had lying around in my spare part um, box yeah, and I also cleaned of course and reassembled the joystick and yeah, I also cleaned the, the power supply with, uh, with a Vetex and also um, with the silk bang and with a piece of paper towel now the system is in a very good looking condition, it works perfectly fine, it is actually now modified and works better because of the composite video signal that I'm getting out of the system and it's actually now a lot easier to record video game footage if I want to with 
this system so now I have a pretty nice looking Atari 2600 Heavy Sixer and yeah pretty cool and now we come to the last console that I'm gonna clean in this series or in this video a Dreamcast this was the Dreamcast that was donated to me from my good friend Harold so Harold if you watch this thanks again and yeah condition it's not in the best condition as you can see it has some slight uh, yellowing on it it's kind of dirty the open button is stuck and it also has some scratches and yeah there's some dirt slash dust inside of the system but uh, yeah it should work he said everything should work out perfectly fine yeah the power cable then uh, it also came with the original RF cable but I actually went uh, ahead and I bought an RGB cable for the system just because I wanted uh, a very good video quality in the end and I don't want it to mess around with the RF cable or anything. Then this is one of the two controllers that came with the system. Yeah, also it's uh, yeah, it's dirty, it has some remainings of a sticker on the bottom but uh, it's not in a bad condition really or anything. And here we have the second uh, controller. It's uh, yeah, it's not that dirty. Still, there is some dirt on it, and it looks like some kind of um, yeah, some kind of paint is on this controller. I guess his um, his sister played around a little bit with the nail polish back in the day, so there's some kind of a glitter paint uh, yeah, on the analog stick and on some other parts of the controller and I also got one of those memory cards and a couple of games <clears throat> I just wanted to fast forward the, the um, video a little bit so I got um, yeah, Star Wars uh, Jedi Power Battle then Soul Calibur then there was another game on the back then the Dream On I guess this was some kind of a demo disc then KO the Kangaroo then also Echo the Dolphin and the last game that he gave to me was this one Sonic Adventures or Sonic Adventure and yeah he couldn't tell me what happened with the disc but uh, yeah there it is really really dirty and actually disgusting because it uh, it it's completely sticky and I don't know what kind of stuff is on this disc but this is one of those discs that I really have to wash that I don't wanna just clean with some uh, window cleaner or anything so I'm gonna wash this uh, disc later on in the video so that you can see how yeah how you can wash a CD but anyways now I'm gonna start oh but let's say first I'm gonna try out the system of course even though he said it works perfectly fine I also always um, check the systems before I uh, before I actually take them apart or anything just in case uh, something's wrong that I then I know I also have to look for some broken stuff inside the system if it doesn't work but in the end it fired on I I had to hold down the, the yeah the CD door because the, the open button was stuck and yeah like I said before this is something that I, that I always do if I get some new old stuff to my collection I test them and this is also the reason why I didn't show you uh, in the beginning or that I didn't try it out those controllers or anything because I already know both of the controllers work so the I just needed to clean those controllers and I didn't have to search for uh, problems or anything and I tested the system with Echo the Dolphin since this CD was or this game was in the best condition and if this game would not load then I would know that there is something wrong with the laser or anything because the CD was actually in a pretty good condition And one thing that I also noticed, and I didn't know if this was normal or anything, was that the, si the system itself, uh, especially the fan, was pretty loud. And also the CD-ROM drive made a lot of noises. 
and uh, yeah, but in the end I've read online that the, it is pretty normal that the fan at least is kind of loud on uh, on a Sega Dreamcast. But this was something that was kind of a surprise to me. Yeah, and here I'm gonna disassemble the, the Dreamcast and I also noticed, of course, that the, the backup battery, the battery that uh, stores the, the, the date and, and some other settings, uh, the battery is dead in the system, which is kind of normal since the system is already 15 years old and has never been changed, the battery inside. So this is also one thing that I'm gonna um, replace later on. I'm gonna replace the old battery and uh, install uh, a battery holder and uh, yeah, put in another new rechargeable battery. And now that I have disassembled the system, I'm gonna continue disassembling the controllers. And later on, I'm gonna wash, of course, all the plastic parts again in the sink and also the, the casing of the video game console. And I also uh, took apart the, the modem, but in the end I didn't uh, show it. Slash, I forgot to uh, record the footage, but it's it's not a big deal or anything. I just wanted also to mention it that I also took apart the modem so that I could clean also the casing of the modem. And yeah, like I said before, I clean everything with dishwashing soap and with the toothbrush in the sink. First, all the plastic parts of the video game console and. Afterwards I clean all the controllers slash all the plastic parts of the controllers. And now I'm gonna wash Sonic Adventure, the CD, I'm gonna wash it in the sink and like I mentioned before I guess in part 2, if you wash a CD in the sink only use hand warm water, so the water uh, should not be hot, it should not be cold or anything, hand warm and just use your fingers, don't use any kinds of uh, tools or anything uh, like a kitchen sponge or uh, or the toothbrush or anything. Just apply some dishwashing soap to the CD and wash it with your hands. I got a little bit overboard or well, let's say I used way too much dishwashing soap on this CD, I don't know why, but it happened. And yeah, like I said before, just use your fingers. And whatever you do, if you uh, have some some dirt on it that's kind of uh, rough to remove 
please don't try to scrap it away because I actually made a huge mistake uh, that you will see right here. What happened was I've uh, damaged the printing on the top of the CD. This is one thing that you really have to keep in mind if you wash a CD in the sink. Don't scratch on the CD or anything. You really have to be careful if you wash a CD in the sink. And afterwards I've cleaned also the CD cases of those games because they were uh, pretty dusty and I thought this was also a good idea to clean those in the sink. So here we have now the damaged CD, now it's clean and it's also dry again and as you can see here I've scrapped away a big chunk on the top part but what I also noticed was that actually the Dreamcast logo and all the writing on this game um, yeah, this is, it is not printed on there, this, is some, uh, this was actually left out from the printing and I also found some other damages on the CD, on the top side of the CD which uh, I later discovered were already on the CD because I checked the video material of how the CD looked before and now I'm gonna check the disc from the other side and uh, yeah you can use a lamp to see if you have some damage on a CD or anything because the, the light will go through all the damaged spots and also as you can see the Dreamcast logo uh, it's not printed on there so it's actually not protected on those parts so I'm actually not sure how how big the damage is right now I'm gonna test it later on but as you can see there are a couple of um, yeah a couple of holes let's call it like that on the printing of the CD but anyways we're gonna find out later on if this game actually works anymore or not also one thing that I just wanted to show you that I can also make mistakes and yeah. But anyways, we're gonna find out later on if this CD works or not. And yeah, after I've cleaned the, the casing, I also thought it would be a good idea to um, treat it with some cream peroxide just to remove some of the yellowing on the system. It wasn't uh, it wasn't bad or anything, the yellowing, but I, I really noticed it. So this was the reason why I also wanted to treat the, the, the casing of the Dreamcast um, with some cream peroxide but uh, yeah I only treated it once and as far as I remember I only left it under the UV light for I guess for about 8 hours so yeah Now the next thing that I did was I cleaned the insides of the game controller slash the circuit boards and also the trigger buttons and the analog sticks and I used silicone remover. Then also those are the top parts. I was able to remove uh, the, the nail polish on on this one um, controller or better let's say on this one Dreamcast logo with, uh, with a paint remover slash with a cellulose thinner. And here I try also to remove the nail polish with uh, some cellulose thinner but in the end it didn't work that well and especially when I applied it on the bottom part of the analog stick I noticed that uh, yeah, the, the plastic of the analog stick started to react to this cellulose thinner slash to the paint remover and there I actually decided to not try any more of removing the, 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 the nail polish especially in the top since you have a lot of uh, knobs on the top and I guess if I would have continued with this paint remover I might be able to remove the nail polish but in the end I guess I would also um, attack or destroy the surface of the analog stick so in the end I thought you know what uh, it's clean it doesn't matter that really to me if this analog stick has this nail polish or not so I thought I'd just leave it like it is. It is now clean but yeah it has some paint on it so what. And afterwards I used again a q-tip and some isopropanol and I've cleaned all the contacts 
on the circuit board of the controller and afterwards of course I cleaned all the contacts on the rubber pads again also with the isopropanol and with the q-tip and some final touches with uh, yeah with some compressed air I cleaned the rest of the circuit board and then I started to reassemble both controllers And the funny thing was actually I almost reassembled one of the controllers completely and then I forgot that I have to uh, connect also the cable to the controller in order to make it work so I had to open up the controller again and uh, yeah apply also the, the, the cable to the controller so that I can actually use it. And here we have both controller now cleaned and reassembled and yeah they look pretty good. Now the next thing that I did was I replaced the internal uh, battery with a battery holder so that uh, if the battery uh, dies again later on uh, in a couple of years or so that uh, it is a lot easier to, to replace this battery And what I also did was I applied some uh, some solder to the contacts of the uh, of the motherboard, which connects the motherboard with the power supply. This is just a precaution that I did because it can happen that if your Dreamcast starts to uh, restart during a game or anything, this can be one fix because over time it can happen that the contacts between the motherboard and the power supply. Uh, will become slightly loose and then you have connecting problems and then it can happen that during a game or anything your Dreamcast starts uh, yeah, restarting the game over and over or better, let's say restarting the account log over and over and this was just one thing that I thought uh, I'm gonna do right now since the console was already open as far as I know it doesn't always uh, fix this problem there could also be a problem with the power supply or anything but in many cases if your Dreamcast starts resetting over and over again then this would be a, a very good fix for about 80% of um, yeah of those cases and yeah the next thing that I did was I also uh, started to clean the uh, yeah the CD-ROM drive and here I apply some grease to the rails of the laser and also to the gears of the motor and I tried to clean almost everything uh, around the CD-ROM drive. I tried to clean the, the spindle, then the laser of course with some uh, window cleaner and the Q-tip and if you grease up the rails of the, uh, of the laser then uh, it's also a good idea to move the laser one or two times forward and backwards just to spread the grease even on those rails and then I continued with rebuilding or well say reassembling the system back together And this is the battery that you uh, that you need to apply. This is a CR2032, and make sure it's a rechargeable battery, since the um, also the internal battery which I replaced was uh, a rechargeable one. And yeah, you don't wanna 
install a non-rechargeable battery into the system because it can end pretty badly and in the end you have two options if you want to replace the internal battery you can um, make the same decision that I did and buy one of those uh, battery holders and solder it on to this little board and then you can use those rechargeable batteries or you can also buy replacement batteries like the one that was already installed in those systems and yeah you only have to desolder the old battery and resolder the new battery into the system so and after I was done reassembling the system, I thought I was finished and then I realized um, that I forgot to clean also the, the controller ports, so I also cleaned those with some isopropanol on a Q-tip and I also used a soft brush to remove or loosen up some dusts or anything inside the, the controller ports and I also used the compressed air to, yeah, to clean those controller ports. And here is the final uh, results. Now that it is clean and everything, the, also the CD door works now, or well, let's say the button works. And yeah, it looks pretty nice. Also with the cream peroxide treatment, there was a slight improvement, not much, but in the end it wasn't also bad or uh, really bad right from the start with the yellowing. So there was a minor improvement with the cream peroxide, but now it looks uh, very, very nice. And also the controllers here, this is the, the f yeah, the first controller. This was only, uh, but let's say this was the one that didn't have the nail polish on it. It's pretty clean right now. Yes, the sticker on the bottom uh, of the controller is slightly, uh, yellow but in the end uh, this doesn't really matter to me uh, it's clean but it has some discoloring so not a big deal or anything and here we have the other controller yes the nail polish is still on there and also on a couple other um, yeah, spots but in the end also on those other spots I didn't want it to use much of the paint remover because it also uh, started to change slightly the color on those controllers but in the end it's clean now and I'm very satisfied and now I test the Dreamcast with Sonic Adventure and also funny thing after I've cleaned everything and reassembled the console back together uh, the fan and also the CD-ROM drive were not as loud anymore as before so this was also a slight improvement and as you can see in this video I, this was the second time that I powered on the system after I, I, this, uh, I reassembled the system because now you can see the date and also the time when I recorded this footage because after I reassembled the system I hooked it up and I just uh, turned it on and let it sit there for two or three hours just so that the battery could recharge the, the new battery and yeah first try with Sonic Adventures wasn't satisfying at all because the system couldn't read the disc and now with the second try Hopefully it will work. And come on. Yes. Took some time, but in the end it started loading. And I also thought uh, i try at least the first stage or whatever of Sonic Adventures just to see if there are any problems with the game. And this is also the reason why I um, yeah, fast forwarded the video a little bit, because it's a pretty long video already. And yeah, now I'm playing Sonic Adventures at least the first uh, boss or the first level, I have no idea, never played Sonic Adventures before.
And after Sonic, I also wanted to test another game and I inserted Soul Calibur. And yeah, in the end, this game also worked. Now I have also a Sega Dreamcast in very good condition, in working condition, with a new battery inside. So thanks again, Harold, for donating uh, your Sega Dreamcast to my collection. I really appreciate it. And yeah, now we are at the end of this video and also of this video series, cleaning and restoring video games and stuff. I uh, hope you enjoyed the show. Maybe you learned one or two tricks that you might never heard before and never have seen before. Maybe see you next time. Take care. Bye.